Hello there everyone and thank you for joining me here at the start of a new campaign in Old World Blues, the A to Z series. And we're playing as the Northern Khans, currently led by Amgalan. I have a lot of faith in my people, but that they also see how bright the future could be. The road to where Amgalan now stands at the loose head of the Northern Khans was a long one. Decades ago, he rode the waste as a playboy punk, raising a ruckus and breaking hearts under Darion and the rest of the new Khans. When Darion met his fate on the Khans like California, Amgalan led a group away to join an expedition of the followers of the Apocalypse. After many years, miles, and not a few battles, both groups arrived in the open wilds of Old Wyoming. Settling down, they intended putting down roots for the first time in the long diaspora. The Khans have a chance to take a long breath. Much older, and he hopes wiser now, Amglan remains a de facto chief, though many of his skin misgivings about his increasingly passive and strained demeanor. The road changed Am Amgalan, although it remains to be seen whether it did not change the rest of the Khans much. But I left my heart in California. We once lived in the vast desert to the west. For many of us, our hearts and minds still rest the waste on heap. Now we yearn for that same warmth, warmth in the mountains of Wyoming, home on the frontier. Despite all the odds, despite the horrors that had been thrown away, we had made it across the wasteland and into a land of salvation, bountiful and plenty in its riches. Our future was to be here, or this, not a soul to doubt, parting of the ways. Our history is one of dark deeds often rewarded with near extinction, though few of us chose to recognize it. In California, our people nearly met their end twice at the hands of those who now rule the West. Those who survived or second defeat were scattered to the winds, and only the action of two men stopped the new cons from dissolving to nothing into the following days. One such man became known as Papa Kam, who gathered the bulk of the survivors, gave them new strength, and remaking them into the Great Khans. They traveled east into Nevada, until they settled in the Mojave Wasteland, and established themselves as a mighty tribe once more. The other man was named Amgalam, and he gathered both survivors and hopefuls, trying to hold them both together. His group was much smaller and were aided by a group known as the Followers of the Apocalypse. Given food, water, and medical attention by these outsiders, Anglan felt obliged to return the favor in some way. So when the Followers planned an expedition far to the northeast, he and his splendid group of Khans walked with them on the road. They still called themselves the Khans, New Khans, and they looked southward towards the ever more distant kin with rebellion in their hearts, a grip along me, stoic indifference. So what do we got here? Bram to strike. Of barons and cons. Wild folks that the cons are peaceful neighbors, my friends, see. Oh, they plant no seeds. Raise no livestock. When they get hungry, they'll come knocking on our doors, looking to raid our uh, larders and drag up anything they can carry. I say we don't give them the chance from Augustus Bailey. Con authority. Control under the cons is tumultuous and uncertain. Within a few years, the situation will change and there will be an opportunity to settle on the path for the future. If someone's support is at least substantial, then when the time comes, they'll still have a chance of leadership. Only time will tell who will lead the cons to their future here in Wyoming. Settling for down, everything is low. Interesting. So I've played as these guys before, but I honestly don't remember very much. Uh, political life, goes out of that, goes out of this. Yeah. So. Con self rule, friends of the followers. Um, we're not going to go with con traditionals, because I went that route last time. So let's, let's see. We have the great con. So, Regis, what the last one did was support the old ways. Let's see. Following the future, Amglan wins the support of the Khans and convinces them to settle down. And then we have Return of Our Eyes Skywards, the two Khans. Essen, for a new Khanate. Well, let's see. Wrath of the Midday. Looks like he can become very aggressive. Interesting. Damage Gearsons goes down. Eastern Approach. Get a lot of claims. Get maybe a core here or there. Uh huh. Queen of the Silo Fields. Interesting. A Connie reborn the vessel of war. That sounds really cool. Ransack coring mechanic. When coring a state, damages existing infrastructure to gain caps of equipment and command power. Huh. Travel nation. Horses. Oh, looks like we get some horses, eh? The Unbroken. Spar by S and group of sisters of steel remnants calling themselves the Unbroken and muster themselves for a cause. Two units will spawn within our lands. Okay, but what do we want to go down this route? Following the future. The Unyielding Hero. A home for all. Caravan Expeditions. Sophisticated Construction Tech. Gains Northern Wander. Interesting. The Realm of Diana. Uh, daily political power goes way up for a while. Healthy Warriors. Exchanging Knowledge. Midnight Union Members of the Research Group. Huh. Honorable Warriors of Montana. Speaking, help from a sister, slayer of sisters, camera rehabilitation, cutting a deal, field medics, anti-venom, putting back learning into practice, accumulated research, intermediate electronics, sophisticated exploration, 
Because she was Stimpaks right away, Fixer, Cat Eye, Mentat, Daddy, and Buffel. Metro Stimpaks. Medicine Distribution. Huh. Lighting the fires. Fire Council, huh? You get horsemen here. The horsemen over there. <clears throat> Give the land of the enclave to the Jacksons as we promised. In return, they'll give us control of their old territories. Hmm. One of thy con. T promising future. Present in the past. True error. Well, I like the right side more. That sounds more interesting to me, in all honesty. Powered cons. Intermediate power armor tech, huh? Essence sounds like more fun to me. So, to form a new conate. Old ways, settling down. I want to be aggressive in this campaign. I apologize for taking so long. I, truth be told, didn't even look at this at all before I started recording. Well, you probably could t guess that from what, what we're doing here. The last Sun Gazer. They called her Sun Gazer, a tribe that was once native to this area, displaced, destroyed by a Brahmin Baron. It seems some things you just can't wait, run away from, after all. A new con indeed. A road that the new cons and followers walked was long and winding, passing through many strange and dangerous lands. They journeyed under the suspicious and watchful glares of rangers, through the territories of those who walked on tar and into the settlements of those who spoke for gods of the heavens above and the steam below. Where the followers were not welcome, Amglan and his companions would step in to intimidate them or fight them out of danger. The two groups became friendly enough along the way, but it was Amglan himself who would begin to pay closer attention to the words and the deeds of the followers. When the rest of his clan drank or brawled in the night, Amglan would speak with the followers and read the collection of books and halltips they carried. He began to question whether it was the land of the Khans that needed to change. Um, it was a slow and quiet change within him, but as the expedition reached the far-off lands that had once been Wyoming and Montana in the days before the bombs fell, Amglan was a changed man. Those around him noted the change as well, though the rest of the new cons were less convinced by words and peace and healing and continued as much as they did before. Before the end of the expedition, they gathered what? Um, I want more political power. Uh, I guess the new conate, we need ruler, so... Tribe structure... Ooh, get more political power, lose weekly war support. Arsenal weaponry. Manpower. There you go. And then what? Alone in the mountains? That's not bad. Ancestors of ways. New homes and families. It was in these sprawling and healthy little lands that the followers began to build themselves an outpost, one from which they could reach out to the surrounding tribes and out townships. When they stopped, we did as well, putting down new roots and making it a home for ourselves. The ground upon which we now stand has been loosely settled by scattered ranchers and tribes who either moved south or joined us upon our arrival. Since those first days, we have dispersed across the flats and prairies and in small groups to hunt and take what we need. Though Amglan so stands as our leader, his authority is only loosely acknowledged, and so each family of the Khans largely does as they see fit. One of the tribes pushed southward by arrival is known as the Sun Gazers. They left without making a fuss, taking their herds towards the Iry of the Baron. The hides were still skyward and barely decided their herds and fields would see better use under his own watch. The poor guys didn't even stand a chance and were wiped out. One daughter of the tribe journeyed to us, a blood-soaked and grim-faced woman named Essen, looking for a new home. A single new recruit would not normally be very noteworthy, but Amglan immediately took an interest in her, calling the woman a fire, wildfire in waiting, a true con at heart, a wolf without a pack, yeah, that one, cooperating with the followers, our ancestors' ways. Well, we want a new con, eight. Support with them. Crowdsource funding. Selling down will grow. Clearing addictions. Amglan's pilgrimage. More for Papa Khan. Well, either one really doesn't matter to us. Never forget he. Approaching the woods. White Rabbit War. Move the White Rabbit War. Approach suit means. Giants. Gratitude. Well, look at them. Peace. What's on the right side? Con warriors. Way of the land. Way of the earth. New workshops. Steeds. Our little ponies. I like the pony idea. A lot. Ride like Genghis. That sounds like fun to me. 
Drop weapons. New cons. Uh, more organization. Reliability air attack. Enemy infantry. It's not bad. Range of the con eight. Oh. Huh. Art of war. Wow. Raider Rangers. Knife in the ribs. An army of raiders. The great cons have arrived in Wyoming. Basement warfare. The reign of the id. Essen musters the troop. Blood on the border. Essen will muster two con outsiders against Amgalan's will and spawning two new units in Warland as she goes to deal with the saints personally. Bloodstained woods. Saints back down. Holding back the storm. Amgalan's trial. Reparations from the roommates. Alright, so we'll keep going on. I guess we'll do. I don't know. Look at this one. Alone in the mountains. We're far from settled on the region of the stage. Many of us have never felt such cold. A blessing and a curse. It won't stay the way forever, though. We're already making contacts to get more supplies up in a level. An occasional settler, too. Um, our ancestors' ways. Well, we don't really want our new ancestors' ways. We want a new colonnade. I'm glad I was a fool to think his methods would get the cons anywhere. The followers' wisdom has softened him. His bones unfit for the reality of war and his mind drowned in idealistic fantasies. The sun's glares upon weakness and Essen, rather by the majority of like-minded cons, demands to return to the old ways. To the way well, the true cons. So it sounds like we should really go our ancestors' ways. As much as I actually do want to, want to do this one, because it just gives you a lot of factories and whatnot. Uh, well, this one's not bad for factories too, but still. Final breath. Prolonged, rooted tradition. When the sun rose down in the dawn, the sun gazers stepped out of their tents, those on patrol lowered their arms, and everyone paid respect as a guiding light rose from its slumber. Midday would call their attention, an hour for prayers of the skies out skybound. When dusk settled, everyone bowed their heads, wishing the great sun goodbye as it left them for the night. For a large portion of her life, Essen knew only the sun. She was born under its loving embrace. She worked tirelessly to impress when it surveyed her people during the day and under cold nights. She would watch the stars, the servants of the sun, as she waited for its return. But when passing faces slowly dwindled to blurred features, when her own hands became hard to recognize, she began to wonder if she had wronged him, her people, or anyone for that matter. The aftermath of the Baron approved her suspicions. She managed to survive a grenade blast by positioning. A taller sun gazer stood in front of her, taking the burn of the shrapnel. And when Essen finally mustered her strength with both the will and might to crawl out of the bodies and rubble that toppled her, she was almost alone. She was alone. She was alone. She was alone. Slick and warm blood and suit, the sun was unbearable and sweltering. It welcomed her with no love this time. Weakness, Essen felt it below, and she understood. This was the price the sun gazers had paid for weakness. Our ancestors' ways. We come from a lineage of highwaymen, raiders, through them. We've taken much. Knowledge of the weapons, maintenance, and teachings of resourcefulness. I want some stability more as well. We have nine divisions. They are 16 combat width. And they have game companies, which I do like a lot, actually. The White Rabbit War. War is broken out on our borders, though this time it has little to do with us. In the hills to our west, our territory of two small factions have begun skirmishing in earnest. One side stands a clan of hulking super mutants, the likes of which we recognize from our days in the far flung of California. The recent arrivals much like us, but have kept to themselves so far. The other are the men of the woods, strange folk who have been here long before us. They worship a white horned rabbit, and have been hostile to our scouts and settlers in the past. We're unsure what has sparked this conflict, but already the fighting has spread towards our holdings, and several hunting parties have been caught in the crossfire. As long as this goes on, we'll have no peace in the west. I'm glad I sat down with some of his most trusted people to make a plan on how to approach the issue. And it will be best we want we make one soon. We have no manpower now. Great. Three research slots only, and what do we have? We are pretty bad on everything. Uh, do we get anything sophisticated? Sophisticated construction and sophisticated exploitation. Well, that's it. Protected storage and salvaged car, huh? Undying spirit. Because this one's on the right here. Motorized attack and defense. So much for peace and quiet. Without mine, I guess we'll go this way then. 
<clears throat> As the Mustard's the troop. I'm glad as a counselor for cooler heads and patience, but insults like these are too great to be ignored. Essence shall storm into the Ruminator's lands and demand retribution. The Saints will reap what they've sown. A white rabbit war. Battle of Medici. Wait, where's the white rabbit stuff? Ah, it's over here. Approach the woods. It's becoming increasingly difficult to ignore the fighting in the hinterlands, with our hunters and trappers often caught in the crossfire. Essence put forth a plan to put things to an end by courting the favor of the cult leader. It may be strange and off-putting, but she believes they can be of use. Giant Killer Cons. Uh, the cult master, Skitcher the Rabbit, the raved has been has met with Essence, but has demanded a test of her skills before they will consider an alliance. The heads of 25 minutes must be delivered to the men of the woods. You'll see us no, until, no more till then. Ballsy of him to make demands, but the cons have had their share of scraps of the mutants in the past. Let's do this. All right, too far. They've been a raid in the night. News traveled fast, and I'm glad with Essen riding behind had raced out to inspect the damage arriving around sunset. A small city, a uh, setting of cons, near the Big Horner Woodlands, had been attacked. Not just attacked, but butchered. The tents have been burned, and the stores stolen, the people have fared even worse. Most seem to have had their throats cut in the night, and their bodies posed in various positions as if it was a joke. Several have been dismembered, and at least one concept was nowhere to be found. Numerous empty booze bottles have been left scattered around the one intact tent, on its side was painted the logo of the saints that gained from the other side of the woodlands. Anglon was cold, not showing his fury or disgust, while Essen was a picture of barely contained rage as she paced around the ruins. Both knew something would need to be done, and the rest of the cons would already be looking for vengeance, with or without them. Both have very different thoughts on what they do next, however. The Saints will pay. Now we blood on the border. Holding back the storm. Saints of blood. Meeting in the woods, as the march into the cult leader's grove, where a bonfire burned bright enough even for her to see clearly by. She was alone with the rabbit worshippers' insistence and kept a hand near her axe in case things took a thing for the worst. They wouldn't take her down without a fire. From the shadows he came, the smell of blood hide and wild mushrooms preceding him. Skeeter the raved approached her until he was uncomfortably close, swaddling a pelts with a rack of antlers strapped to his back. Sun Khan wants to be friends, does she? Help us take back the holy hills from the giants? But being referred to as a Sun Khan took her by surprise. She had no idea the cult knew anything about her history as a sun gazer. She forced it from her mind, however, instead thinking back to just how many of the rabbit men she passed on the way to this meeting. It was many more than the cons had estimated, which was concerning, but at least it was validated her push to try and make allies of them. She finally responded, as long as the people of the rabbit will be friends to us in return. Narrowed eyes over a cheekless, cheerless, black-toothed smile was a response, followed by maybe, maybe. We have no weak friends or liar friends. You must prove your strength first. Challenge accepted. Bloodstained Woods Violence has only intensified the Bighorn Woodlands as small bands of saints clash with the con warriors. They cannot match to face us to face. Faces. Matches face to face. But they are honorless and crafty as raiders come. If we want a quick end to this, we need to commit to a more decisive strike. So, when are we going to war with these guys? Right now. Oh, we are at war with them. Well, would you look at that? Uh. See what you can do. Doesn't help the rod of manpower, but whatever veteran, pathfinders, able bodied tribesmen, we definitely gotta go there next. Demopolis, nice. Let's see what you can do. Good. Bloodstained Woods, yep. Do what you must. Combo with which is not a deal, but whatever. Give me some place.
And if they want to help us, that's great. Don't get me wrong. Still. Fine. Oh, they're special forces divisions, that's why. Saint of Blood. As the inner warband is struck up further and further into the big corner woodland seeking the saints, all against Amgalan's urging uh, for cooler heads. Some shade of Buri killed by booby traps or an ambushes, the saints have proved reluctant to face him in an honest battle. The campaign left her increasingly frustrated and irritable, and more than one tree had suffered as she allowed a script steam. Now, though, Essen had finally found their hideout in the wilderness, thanks to the information squeezed out of an unfortunate captive. Remembering when they had suffered at the hands of the saints' scum, Essen and her wards waited until the cover of night, until most of the saints were passed out drunk or high. After a minute, they stormed the old hunting lodge, Essen booting in the doors and leading the way room to room. They met little resistance, and the raiders they met being ill-equipped to fight back, and it was in a slaughter rather than a battle. She was a ghastly sight as she left, covered in blood, and it lit the place on fire she went. The saints didn't return, left any left in the woodlands, quickly retreated back to the pillows at the country club. They got off easy. The saints backed down. Essen returned, bloody but triumphant, having discovered the saints hideout in the woodlands. She personally stormed the place and put anyone she found there to the knife. Archie's goons have retreated back to the country clubhouse with their tails between their legs and left us a pile, a welcome pile of spoils. That'll do. This is not good. I'm glad you got there, though. Nice. Good stuff. Well, since you're here, you might as well help out and kill them off. The airplanes of Baron's Irie is not easy. Is this Irie? Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's pretty difficult overall. But their loss should hopefully be our gain. Oh, Iron Alliance. The cold master, uh, Skeeter the Raid, has met with Essen, but is demanded a skill or test before they'll consider an alliance. The heads of 25 mutants must be delivered to the men of the woods. They'll see us no more until then. Balls are going to make demands, but the cons pass their, has had their share of scraps of mutants in the past. Let's do this. Come on, we're getting there. Those Moshe will die. Now we can't quite pierce them, unfortunately. We're getting there too, which is good. We definitely need that army speed. Hey, these guys died here too. Great. Land of the Giants no more. The fanatics have accepted Essen as a friend, though they are leader of the rest of us. So already she makes plan to lead them to the final victory over the mutant band. Their time is over. Oh, we got him. Very nice. Good. I even forgot to look at this stuff too. Look at that. Pipe guns. I do tank. There's a caravan stuff. Nope. Hopefully, eventually, we can get that expanded too. Um, Marshall Republic. Alan Watch. Casper will be good too. Once we get there. Buy you motors. An uneasy friendship. The men of the woods have taken their aid as a form of divine blessing, pledging themselves their cause in whole. While we're in, there are many, and we still can uncover more enclaves and catch the supplies even months after our arrival. The lives will be beneficial, if uncomfortable. Nice. Can 
we actually take these guys on, I don't think we'll do very well if we take them on. But we're gonna do it anyways, because we because we can. God, none of this stuff is available. That's not good. Ancestors' ways. Peace upon the steps. The bear had been dealt with, and his people were now answered to us. The future is in our hands now. Matters of the new state. That Baron's leftovers aren't going to go easy. We'll need to make another move. Uh, next move calculated. That'll get a core. That's good. Huh. A new con from under the Baron. A former goon under the Baron, Ezekiel Henry, took to us and our authority fast. And so far, people are more than happy to work with him. The Baron's daughter. It turns out the Baron wasn't as soul as we thought. The question on everyone's mind is, does it run in the family? Well, it very well could. Amgalon among the ashes. Before the still burning ashes of the Baron August's manor stood Amgalon. The warmth of the war kept keeping the nightly frost from his skin. Though sounds would imply such a thing, the clicking and crackling of the embers brought him no peace. The had traveled thousands of miles in search of Wyoming. A paradise with Paradise Land was supposed to tall tales spun by the followers. Amgalon was the one who shepherded his people from Papagam and brought them here. Though it was beautiful, the land itself still rich in spite of nuclear calamity, this was the opposite of what he had hoped for. The Baron was a monster, this could not dispute. Those under his boot made it clear enough that such a thing was inevitable. But it was still Amglan who allowed more Khans to die. The land may be safe now, but it shouldn't be secured through these means. It was the exact thing he had hoped to take away from them. And yet now the children who were born along the way now knew of this sort of bloodshed firsthand. For a moment he wondered if perhaps they had been too greedy, that maybe they took too much and thus shook up the lands and inspired war and murder in the hearts of the people. But ultimately, Anglon settled on one conclusion. The way so will never truly be war-free. The Baron will not rob us of an instant future, and perhaps old ways shall become new once again. Moving into Ralston. Ralston's people uh, are peaceful enough so that they tolerate even the most brutal of Khans. We could use, you could make, we should use the make of most of this opportunity and seek developments in the town. It's not a bad idea. The battle. Of Mititsi. The locals claim that the, much of Mititsi was torn apart in the great skirmish between strange men of the woods and a local group of super mutants. Perhaps we could benefit either from earning their trust or simply helping ourselves in repairing the local infrastructure. Perhaps, perhaps, perhaps. Uh, we're going to go with asymmetric first. On the matters of government, Amgalan and Essence stood at a small overlook, staring down at the camps below. A morning breeze brushed us against them cozily, a smell of morning dew bringing a smile to the old Khan's face. I think it's foolish to do now, he asked Essen, holding his journal close to his heart. She grunted. They crave a strong hand, not a strong system, Amgalan. A strong hand can come from within just as much as without. We don't need a despot or so a progenitor, Essen. The Khans have grown too large for such simplicity. Essen grumbled at that for a moment. Do you think they feel that way? Some do, some do not, but still, they choose to listen to me. Here we can forge an actual future for people. That's what other governments of the West do. With Baron's gone well, we can afford some room to grow. Try not to break your own people and your own hopes and followers, she said, taking a seat by him. His hand reached out to her, holding a small bit of jerky for your health, he said with a hearty chuckle, and for joining us. Amglon's words soaked the fires within Essen's heart. Still, Essen knew the Khans would never be an NCR. For how could we be? Anything else? Military High Command, Crusher. Oh, Reinforcer is not bad. Division, Trition, Experience, Soldiers, Losses. Keeps with the Ritual sounds like something we should probably take. Uh, an Old Softy. X Ranger. Ooh. The Tinkerer. Budding Building. The Wise Crow. Friends in High Places. Scientific Devotion. Tribal Leader's not bad, too. Because eventually we'll get the Ruler class. Faithful Henchman. Tribal Elder. I want that extra manpower. It's not going to be worth very much, but it'll be something here at least. The last redoubt. Uh -huh. They call it a survivors from where they come from. Memory Dalton. We march Papa Count, why not? While Amglon's fire is cool and, cold and subtle, the man who came to be known as Papa Khan took his great cons of the Mojave with a fire in his heart. Lessons of Darion. 
Darwin was one of the most notorious cons in the old days, taking lessons from his father, whether it be ill or not, has become a com commonality. Where weapons come from. We can't make a living taking your weapons from external sources. We have to be able to make and maintain our own. His name was Papa Khan. When Darian met his fate and the Khan stood on the brink of death for the second time, Amglan was not the only one to lead a group of survivors away. His group was indeed smaller than the two. The large followed man, already affectionately known as Papa. Papa Khan uh, uh, was a fierce bear of a man who believed the NCR's future, the Khan's future, lay eastward in the lands, hopefully out of the NCR's reach. He and Amglan had been peers, if not friends, and their parting was peaceful enough when the time came. They differed most of the, in the past who wished to walk. Papa was a determined man who felt the Khans must go to the low and be stronger than the world around them, while Amglan had dreams of making friends and finding some new purpose. It had been decades since the two last met, and there had been no contact between the two groups in that time, but Amglan still holds out hope that his kin estranged by distances are still doing well somewhere. Perhaps they'll meet again someday. Do you remember Papa? I'm making an anti-tank, which is good, but I need more than just anti-tank. to try to structure Stability is very important. The nation. Choose authority. That's fine right now, too. Darn it. Okay. Um, this dynamite. A new con from under the Baron, of which we want to do. Um, the Khan's warriors, the very heart of a tribe's a proud warrior culture. The place in society must be respected regularly. That's a quote, they grow unruly. Yeah, pretty much. What else we got here? What is this? A born walker. Let him cook. Progress mover. The business con. Domesticated viper. Wall painter. Good nature. Scoundrel. Remember Darion. Darion, Garl, Deathham, we all know the legends. We all remember the tales. Uh, the stories always sound the same. Failed cons, and some of us, including Amgalan, lived through some of them. For him, it changed world and made him seek a life, life of peace for his people. Darian's failures of the young Amgala on Taurus Hartnett, too. For a second time, his people have been devastated by a single person, a supposed chosen one, no less. When they tried to run, the answer would capture them, and when they hit, they would, their own would turn against each other over things as basic as camels. Garl's aggression destroyed the first cons. Darian's paranoia and mania destroyed the new. Amgala wouldn't let either be the death of his. He just had hope that his people's hearts were aligned with him. Can cons know peace? Someday. Of course, the Baron's daughter. Um, way of the land. I do want horses. I think it'd be a lot of fun. Water is the very essence of life, a precious commodity that all waste and societies must have. So, to strengthen our position and secure our future, we'll dig even more wells. That'd be great. Baron's daughter, an evening of peace. Ezekiel set his cards down, took a swig of his old Roman, still listened to the other players' conversations. To his left sat Ranger Jay, a fellow Cyclops and one of the few cons who'd taken an early shot on Ezekiel as they had bonded over mutual love for games of chance. They, uh, on the right was Justin Walker, back from a trip to the Fall Rage Q to discuss more A for the Baron's former subjects. He didn't know her all that well, but had noticed she always seemed relieved to get back to the cons' camps. Uh, or just maybe just get back to Amgala, and he wondered for a moment, thinking of how her gaze tended to wander towards the Placid Chief at all times. Um, got himself filled the last chair across from Ezekiel's as serene as ever despite how badly he was losing. They were discussing the restlessness, restlessness of the other cons, of Essen's constant and reliable counseling of preparation for further conflict, of troubling scout reports emanating from the south, and the holes forming Jay's boots. Ezekiel stayed quiet through most of it, both due to his inclination to listen to more than speak and his limited experience among the cons as of yet. 
He was, after all, still green as far as being counted as one of them. Now, however, Amglum looked directly across the table through the haze of cigarette smoke into Zeke's remaining eye and asked, What would you say, Zeke? Were another of your new brothers or sisters that asked what you what she, we should strive for? Whether it be peace or war, friends or subjects, sword or plowshares? The others all looked around to Ezekiel now stand and waited patiently as he finished his last of his drink before answering. I'd say that I reckon I love both is my answer. Ezekiel continued his jesting frown gently. Jay nodded lightly, and I'm glad I'm reacting not at all. Now, I like what you'll want to do, boss. There ain't nothing right about always fixing for a new fight or trying to pick on weak folks, you know? I would have stood by the Baron if I thought otherwise. Sometimes trouble comes your way if in you invite it or not, though, and I don't think I'll be bearing my six shooters behind the outhouse anytime soon. As Zico tossed three cards aside and drew out new ones as Amglan responded, a smile ran across the old man's face. A respectable words, my friend, not unlike those I would have said years ago, as I walked alongside the followers to this old, wide-open land. May whatever troubles we meet be met with the little blushes we can manage, however. The chief laid down his cards as Jay and Justine. I got a couple more wise words for y'all. Ezekiel still laying his cards across the table. Full house. Baron's daughter. Oh, let's wait for that one real quick. Oh, we're going to move into Ralston. Ralston's people are peaceful. So much so that they tolerate even the brutal of the cons. Most brutal of cons. We should make the most of this opportunity and seek developments in the town. Uh, civvies are not bad. Bolster. A Ralston power plant. Uh, there's an old power plant hooked up uh, to the nearby factory. If Jay's reports arrive, right, it wouldn't take too much elbow grease to get it back up and running. Oh, this is where we get motorcycle stuff. Okay. Ooh. And clear Bighorn Lake. To east, Bighorn Lake lies infested with raiders. They built themselves a small port so that we can repurpose for further operations, should we choose to pursue it. Oh, intermediate industry. Well, we're definitely going to need that. Pushing forward. Uh, let's do the open road. For our bikers to continue to ride as fast and as free as they have been, we need to fix the roads. They'll send up to work teams to ensure that they are befitting our newfound oil-hungry stallions. And, uh, new workshops. Travel us to cottage industry will serve you well, provided you're satisfied producing a gun every week or so. No, many hands means a need for many weapons. Uh, and only dedicated workshops will be able to say such a need. Putting out a fire. Fighting is broken down in Riverton between some of our people and the locals. Samuel has volunteered to crack some heads until it's over. The oil and gunsmiths. Weapon crafting is incredibly taken seriously by the Wyoming locals, so much so that almost every weapon under the Baron's staging is in near-mint condition. No doubt his assets will serve us well in upkeeping our own resources. Saunders Ranch. The Saunders are a family that lived under the Baron for years. While they're not exactly peaches themselves, they're willing to work with us and at the heart of many locals. So that's pretty cool. I'll get some uh, more research speed as we are just going to hang out. I, uh, well, truth be told, I uh, went ahead and just took out the glow glowing ones. What is these? Glow's Cradle. Um, just because it was actually went by really, really fast. It was actually a pretty easy war overall. Which I was okay with, you know. I mean, sometimes we like little easy wars here and there, so. Um, we got two political power a day, massive support for a new Khanate. Finally begin a scavenging program. We can probably close out of this one finally. And continue moving on. Science points are not bad. Optimized training, sure, why not? A little bit of foraging would help us. And I guess next up we're going to try to expand into Nevada. Uh, just to continue moving forward. Getting more territory, coring more stuff, and we'll see what we can do about this group over here now. Our spec up divisions, there's not much in them. Um, cams at least get some what? Fire teams demo. I'll get some demos. Yeah, we'll go with that for now. A path earned. Oh, look at that. Two more cores. Uh, after much ado, we've earned the trust and collaboration of the people of Irie. Our position has been solidified in Wyoming and challenged. We only need a brace for the future to come. That'd be great. And the ground workshops. Ooh, intermediate construction tech. And building any form of society, you must be able to depend on yourself in order to serve the interests of both the people and state. A preemptive step to introduce larger reform will show our determination like never before. Con of cons. The grand workshops. An age of prosperity. Ooh, research a lot. Add conate teeth. Oh, more compliance growth speed. I like that too. The city hand of the Amgalon. Amgalon's knowledge of nature and its diplomatic nature have allowed us to work alongside farmers in northern Wyoming. This is not bad, too. That's pretty good. Um, will that benefit us immediately, though? I would like to go to Welcome to Army. We do want to go to War, too. The Grand Workshops, of course, would be nice and ideal. How much longer must we wait? We've got still quite a few days. And let's optimize training some more, too. Gasper, how are we looking? From up the node, absolutely. It's only level 3, which means we can boost it up even more. If possible, eyes going great. I'm glad I've been teaching Essen to read. Whenever the two had free time. 
Some days they would work out of old books, borrow from the followers, on others Zom Galan would carefully write messages in the dirt or on old papers. Today they moved along the old pre-war roads, asked them tasked with reading the signs left behind by the people of bygone times. She was having difficulty, however, often giving up and asking the older Khan to give her a hint or outright tell her what was written. At first, Amglon took her struggling to be the result of wear and tear on the signs, but soon he suspected something more. Finally, he asked Essen, how well can you see me? She hesitated, looking away before replying in a flat voice, you're blurry. You always have been, but it's been getting worse. It was obvious how much it would pain her to admit it. Amglon laid a gentle hand on her shoulder, reassuring her before saying, I'll say nothing of this to the other Khans if you wish my silence, but I strongly suggest that we ask the followers for their aid. At least they may be able to slow it down. Aston gritted her, grit her teeth for a moment, irritated at the idea of being help, asking for help from anyone, but in the end she took a deep breath and responded evenly, Uh, fine, alright. Get some flexible designs too. That'd be good. More output? Yes, please. Spec up, support equipment, all of the good stuff. And we have cams, which is nice. Fire teams? I don't think we're making fire teams. No, we're not, so let's not use fire teams. Um, special forces. Ooh, first, special forces go right there. That'd be great. Ralston Construction Projects. Facilitating growth within Ralston will be mutually beneficial for the locals and our own endeavors in the region. Let's clear what we can and see what happens. Travel drills. Inaction causes decay. True for the muscles, true for the mind. Only the regular drilling will rewards keep in peak condition. Help settlements out. That'd be great. And honestly, we probably could use more research speed. I don't mind spending on stuff like that, because that does benefit us in the end. Budding buildings. It's not bad. Traveling is nice and all, but life on the open road is a bit overrated. Give me a chance to take my town with this place and I'll blow you away. One of the many Khans born on the road during the long migration, Baleas was born of the union between a Khan mother and a father from a now forgotten tribe. Only st uh, A nomadic experience is that all she has known, only stopping in one place for a year or so at most, but the arrival in Old Wyoming feels like an opportunity to her. Always prone to working with her hands, the prospect of settling down and building something meant to last is almost intoxicating. Fine of the followers, she plans to absorb any knowledge they can teach her, and her hopes to stay building, busy building for years to come. I like construction speed. Uh, this stuff is not bad. Autism weaponsmiths. Weaponsmiths are you? Weapons are a kind of unique product. It's a barrier between life and death. Being dispassionate about the craft won't just make people upset; it'll get them killed. So all the lazy smiths and in, in with the driven ones. Nuka Cola bottling plant. Fate is on our side after all, an old Nuka-Cola plant out in the countryside has an immense stockpile within it. Like a treasure trove, we simply stumbled upon. There's plenty of scrap in Nuka-Cola to go around. Range away. What was once home? The Vault 15 was once home for ancestors and many others, including uh, some of our worst enemies. There's humility and or origination. Enemies of the NCR. A constant threat to our way of life across the years was civilization. Our greatest foe being the new California Republic, and avoiding their growing power while I learned many tricks to survive. And the Ranger Wave. Jay had much to show us, and we have much to learn. The Rangers were proficient warriors of the modern world. If we had their discipline and their time gone by, many things would have been different, of course. More workshops for the Chief? Probably not for now. So there you go, it's the Martial Republic. And down they go. So if I do this against the last readout, could they do well against these guys? Because if we can break in there fast enough, I'm okay with that. Yeah, they're reinforcing too. Probably not. So I'll let them attack us next and see what happens. Ah, see that? That's what we like to see. Try to kill yourselves on our line. That'd be quite beneficial to us. They can slightly somewhat pierce us, whatever. Oh, I'll grab this one next. I also wanted to go to war to get things moving, go to well equipped army, get more factories. Hmm. Let's go and grab these next. I guess the Baron's died, which we read earlier, too. So as we get back in, they'll reinforce. 
Uh, Wasteland Tactics is not bad, but I don't plan on using Enforcers, so we're going to go with Ancient Tactics, maybe. I mean, Wasteland Tactics sounds right. But the locals, we just don't get benefit from this that much. Sound from the front. Horse sports always good to have. Rad apprentice. Nice. And reinforce here as much as possible can too. We get way more special forces equipment too. Might also recommend maybe an airbase. Authority would be good too. In the meantime, Lone Wanderers, Wyoming is a large, beautiful land. Some of our kind think it is too large. These same crafty individuals have begun to restore the motorcycles from an old automotive production facility. Perhaps to start something new? The uh, Baron Daughter. I'm Galan stepped into the cold, old Casper jail home once to a number of largely innocent but unlucky folks now playing host to only a handful of people who had been part in the war against the Collins. Members of Zack Company's leadership, but a few of the worst of the Baron slugs, and Annette Bailey. When the flames consume the Bailey home and the Baron himself, his daughter is surrendered to Amgalan and the rest of the Khan's forces. A few call for her to be killed on the spot, blaming her for the bloodshed, but the old chief had refused. She spent the days in, since in prison, while the Khans had come to grips with the situation, but now the guards have passed on a request from her to meet with Amgalan. Once he had arrived, she wasted little time making her proposal, standing at the bars with a charming smile across her face. Good morning, Amgalan. I've been looking forward to meeting you in less violent conditions. You've got a fair enough reason to hold me here. I am the child of your enemy after all, but I want you to know that I can do a lot more for you if given my freedom. I know the families of the Irie better than anyone, their strengths and even their weaknesses, and I can encourage their cooperation with you. She stared at the old con's face before adding, With my help, peace and prosperity will return quicker, and isn't that what we all want? And up punctuated it with all another smile, and I'm glad granted silently uh, that her words and her voice were charming enough. With what he wouldn't credit yet was her sincerity. Added a positive think he responded, I'll tell you my answer tomorrow morning. Later that day, Amgalan called to send Ezekiel, former agent of the Baron who had been in prison for his opposition to the uh, war against the Khans. The two men had met when the old Khan released most of the prisoners in Casper Prison and quickly built a report in the day since. Ezekiel could become Amgalan's best source for info about the Irie, and his people once again he was hoping Ezekiel could prove Adam enough to make a good decision about whether to accept Enet Bailey's offer of help. You know her better than anyone else, I suspect, and I value your opinion. What should be done with a young woman? The other man lit a cigarette and thought for a moment before answering. The smartest move is probably to leave her in herself, and I'm honest with you, boss. I don't want to throw any wool over your eyes. Annie's a sneaky one. It's a bit of a mean streak to her. She's also smart as whip, though. Knows everything about the Irie, and knows the war's over. She can do what she says. Ezekiel removed his hat, drove the back of his head, and added in a little bit of a lower voice, I'm also plumb fond of her boss, and I'm more than willing to help keep her penned in and behaving if you give her a chance. That was a plainly laid out answer, and I'm glad was confident Ezekiel was no liar. It was time to make a decision. She's dangerous. She'll get a chance. Less stability, less caps income. Get more compliance, growth speed. I want that growth speed. Get our stability, we can get the stability back and whatnot, but still. I bet you would really like to pour this state as well. Lone Wanderers pushing forward. Restoring military vehicles isn't going to be easy. Taking measures to prepare a greater industrial platform will allow our bikers to get on go, go quicker. But we'll do the Ranger Way next. They called them Rangers. That'd be nice. That'd be really nice. Ah, now we lost them. So maybe they'll attack us. Maybe not. Our little helpers. Crap, some of the drug trade, very nice. Any tank we absolutely need. Get some cams because obviously we need them. Yeah, you can't do very much. So what will convince them to get over here and die for us? Uh, I'm going to go back just in case, yeah. Ah, they also cleared one of the last readout.
They called them rangers. The rangers and the cons of several encounters in a long times long forgotten. Their sky, nigh unmatched by the rank and file of the Kane, was always intriguing to Anglan in his youth. That's not even touching on their fashionably intimidating sense of style. Though some of those long days of driving a bike through the California sun were behind him, Ranger Jay brought those thoughts right back to the forefront of his mind. With them in tow, the Khans could learn all new tricks and become stronger defenders of their own accord. The Khans needn't be street rats. So them fighting these guys over here. Let's see what happens. Could you, with a bit of reinforcement, win? That's going to be a fat no. Good to know. Oh, them just in case for now. It looks like they desperately need it. For now, I'll just join them here. Because they continue attacking. Great, if not, let's see what we can do. Four. What else we got? Military Command Crusher. I do like the more attack. That's pretty nice. I like less soldiers' losses. I'm going to grab Psycho Daniels. Got plenty of money though. A without a clan or a con. While the Northern Khans have faced many of their own troubles, there's pale to comparison with what Papa Khan's band of great cons had now gone through. The wind blew in a level from the south that morning, bringing with, with a heat and tinge perhaps of blood in the air. Something has happened. What are these strange faces? Bitter springs in the NCR. While Amgalan Essen and the other cons of the north were putting down roots, considering how to move into the future. Far to the south, the disaster was brewing. The great guns of the Mojave Wasteland, having already been pushed out of Vegas into the hinterlands, now faced violent displacement once more. Incensed by one too many raids against their holdings and traders, the NCR forces in the Mojave mobilized a full scale attack on the Khan's home in Bitter Springs. The attack came at a time when Papa Khan himself was away leading a raiding party, and those who remained steeled themselves for the last effort at breaking out, or at least providing an escape for the non combatants. The attempt would have sent them straight into the kill zone if it were not for the time we returned to Papa and his men, coming home earlier than expected. Papa Khan and his warriors struck the NCR rear guard with a fierce assault, cutting down many of the attackers and drawing away troops from the front of the battle. It would not have been enough, though, and the NCR brought far too many soldiers for the Khans to have any hope of routing, but the chaos gave those who remained in Bitter Springs a chance to push out all at once and break through the line. It was riders having been left behind in Bitter Springs at the day as Papa's right hand, who led the breakout then lingered behind as his people fled. He saw Papa fall that day, cut down by the concentrated fire of a dozen or more soldiers as well as sniper fire, and the image never left his mind. Once he could wait no more, he turned his own back and ran to catch up with the others. Papa will not be forgotten. Terrible. Pushing Ralston forwards. Clearing the way is one thing, but we ought to make sure that we know what we're doing first. Let's hope the boys get cracking with what they come up with. What we can use. Gathering resources is key to any future here in Wyoming. Knowledge of it, well, is paramount. Industrial means. Setting up industry across the lands is always nice. Industrial capacities. A bunch for exponential growth in such troubled towns will lead us to better days. Pushing forward. Of course, con tools. Tools are the backbone of any industry. Uh, of any intentions of maintenance, too. We we'll want to make sure they have the best tools as many as we can, whether we need to make them ourselves or discern which ones are worth saving from the junkyards. The workshops. Trouble to cottage industries will serve you well, uh, provided you draw satisfied producing a gun every week or so. No, many hands means a need for many weapons, and only dedicated workshops will be able to save such a need. We call it survivors. Throughout our long history, the cons have had one consistency. We're survivors. We picked up knowledge as we need and adapted to our surroundings. So it sounds like it's not going so well. And we're doing okay right now. I'm not great against these guys, too. Losses, too much for me, in my opinion. But we're getting there. Uh, I think I'll end it there, though. If you enjoyed the video, though, please consider leaving a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below. And I'll see you tomorrow as we continue on with the whole Northern Cons and our story. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.